Greetings wonderful people, my name is Savan, and today we'll take a look at this fascinating metroidvania named Kato Robato and see what we can learn from it as game designers. Different weapons for different playstyles. If you give players different weapons or skills, don't forget to also provide them with a reason to choose one over another. In Gato Robato, various weapon range makes you constantly switch your tactics. One weapon stuns enemies in place and thus excels at killing single targets, while another is super strong, deals area of effect damage and can shoot enemies through walls. Rocket Launcher also allows you to jump higher, has a cooldown and comes at the drawback of having a strong knockback. The same playstyle difference applies to the character itself. You can enter a giant mech and crush everything on your way or choose to have a better mobility and be content with dying on the first hit. Restrictions spark creativity. Normally you can leave the robotic suit and use wall jump or squeeze through tight spaces as a cat. But in this hot area you have to really put the mechanical suit to good use because you are not allowed to abandon it. Or consider water. Your super powerful suit is useless in it. If you don't want to die on the first hit, use a submarine, which allows for unique and completely different gameplay. Contrary, the vents allow you to explore the capabilities of Kitty itself. Your vulnerability and mobility become the gameplay's main focus. This constant change of movesets available to your character makes sure the game never gets boring. Teach through game mechanics. Gato Robato never explains you how to perform a rocket jump in a sequence of boring tutorials, but rockets have an explosion cloud. If you touch it, you'll discover that it doesn't deal damage, but instead you'll be pushed away. At some point you'll realize that it's not really shooting that propels you upwards, you must actually hit something. And then you start shooting the walls and learn how to perform a wall jump. Visual Introduction and if you absolutely need to teach the player some counterintuitive idea, show it to them instead of showing a wall of text in their faces. For instance, Kiki will automatically jump into water or shoot with a newly acquired gun, which immediately shows you what the character is capable of. Grinding is not fun. Enemies in Gato Robato don't drop any coins or anything like that. You don't have to farm pickups in order to beat the game and you are free to skip most of the foes, which is, again, a different way to play the game. I'm sure it's one of the reasons why speedrunners are so attracted to Gato Robato. Moreover, you can only replenish health at checkpoints or other important places. This makes health a much more valuable resource and it's easier for designers to adjust difficulty because they know exactly how many hits you'll be able to take between points A and B. Telegraph attacks. If your goal is frustrating the players, make an attack which comes out of nowhere and gives them little to no time to react to it. Contrary, a good attack is well telegraphed. You can anticipate what will happen next and use your skills to avoid taking damage. A reason to not hold the button down. I can hold the key to shoot repeatedly in a submarine. However, if I want to turn around, I need to stop shooting for a second. And that's great game design, if there is no need to stop holding a button, you might as well make its action automatic. Unfortunately, the same idea doesn't apply to the weapon you'll carry through almost the entire game, Robot's Pistol. Each button press corresponds to exactly one shot bullet and it's quite an annoying feature for a modern game. For example, if I was holding down the shooting button, the weapon could slow me down. Again, it would encourage players to make more interesting decisions. Should they shoot or skip the enemy to move faster? If you're interested in this topic, I recommend you to listen to this talk by JW from Blumbeer. Maps are important. In Gato Robato, opening a map is as easy as pressing escape, and you can clearly see the rooms you haven't visited yet, as well as checkpoints. That's really all you need to solve any problems with navigation and still encourage exploration. If we're talking about Gato Robato, it's impossible to avoid discussing its fascinating user interface. Obviously, it shows players all the information they might need, but it also reacts to their input and it even features an icon of a kitty which changes to an angry facial expression while shooting. But what I'd like to note is how attached it is to the game world. 
If you enter a Mac, you see a specific interface, just as if its glass was right in front of you. Should you enter a submarine, you will see different devices on the screen. At the same time, Kiki itself is free to enjoy the scenery without any distractions. A very similar feeling of your actions having an effect on the game occurs when you explore water-filled levels at first, then drain them and find fish helplessly lying on the floor. And that's it for today. If you are interested in learning more information about Gato Roboto's design, I recommend you to read an article about it on Gamma Sutra. And if you'd like to see more game design tips from me, please subscribe to this channel. Make great games and don't forget to test them well, and I'll see you in the next video. Farewell.